We have uh, four members present here in the boardroom, and that's uh, Wade Levins, Phil Stevenson, myself, and Charlie Atkins. And we have three members uh, participating with teleconferencing, Chris Ratliff, Lori Hester Deal, and Musco Calls. And also we have our attorney, Scott Farthing. So I'd like to welcome everybody. I'd like to welcome those who are viewing by YouTube. Um, the first item we have is we're going to open uh, a public hearing, and it's a, a public hearing for the budget amendment for fiscal year 2019-2020. Uh, this amendment will increase the adopted budget for fiscal year 2019-2020. to The new total budget amount will be $90,454,539. Uh, 90 million, I'm sorry, 90 million, dollars uh, Do we have any discussion? Any comments? Yes. Okay, so it must have been changed. Let's read that back into the minutes then. Um, again, the amount is $90,484,539. And Aaron, you didn't have any uh, public comments regarding this? No, ma'am. We solicited comments by email to receive them electronically because it's going to be electronic. Do we have any comments or discussion from the board? If there are no comments or discussion, we will close the public hearing. I'll make a motion we waive the reading the rules for the public hearing. Is there a second? Second. And the clerk will do a, walk, a roll call vote. So next on the agenda is um, committee recommendations. And that would be Aaron Sizemore. motion we waive our rules and vote on this tonight. So that's a, a motion, Charlie. Yes. Is there a second to the motion? Second. Okay, and the clerk will do a roll call vote. We're voting on the amendment to the budget. Actually, we're voting on waiving the rules. Yeah, waiving the rules. Oh, yeah, I'll waive the rules. Bill Stevenson? No. Wade Blevins? No. Chris Ratliff? Yes. Charlie Atkins? Yes. Corey Deal? Yes. Judy White? Yes. Uh, 
Uh, if you wish to adopt the amended budget, now would be the time to do so. Is there a motion to adopt? So moved. Yes. Yeah. Oh, Second. There's a motion by Chris Ratliff, a second by Charlie Atkins. The clerk will do a roll call vote. Austin Call. Trustee Atkins. Trustee Atkins. Trustee Atkins. Trustee Atkins. Trustee Atkins. Trustee Atkins. in our packet, Roscoe, that itemized the detail of it. It was on the second. I'm sorry, go ahead. You didn't get it? Okay. All right. The committee recommendations by Aaron Sizemore. If you'll turn in your original agenda, the bottom part, page 21. We have a list of budget transfers that were recommended by the budget committee. First one is victim witness director Susan Williams transferred for thirty-five hundred dollars to from part-time salaries to office supplies. This motion was made by Ms. Deal and seconded by Mr. Atkins. As we move on down, you'll see there's another one that's um, Requested by the police by Sheriff Shore. Um, there's another one in fire programs. And then there's uh, finally one at the end of those minutes for the 911 department. Um, if you'd like to discuss any of them, we can pull them out and discuss them. If not, if you're okay with uh, accepting those recommendations, then you can uh, make a motion to approve the budget committee recommendations from March 26th. Are there any questions? We're voting on all the all of them are you know, all of them at once. Is that what you're doing? Mm -hmm. If there are no questions, do I have a motion? I just keep the committee recommendation. Okay, so uh, the clerk would do the clerk would do a roll call vote. Okay, this is a roll call vote for the Approval of the budget committee recommendation from the meeting on March 26th. Roscoe Call. Yeah. Bill Stevenson. No. 
Wade Blevins? No. Chris Rattler? Yes. Charlie Atkins? Yes. Lori Deal? Yes. Judy White? Yes. I'm going to ask that you would move to your additional agenda. There's a budget committee, set of budget committee minutes in that additional agenda. On page 16. We have motions to approve transfer for the circuit for the clerk's office, Commonwealth Attorney's Office, the Maintenance Department, the Water and Sewer Department, the Circuit Court, and one for the Commissioner of Revenue. And that's also one for the, the Mount Rocket Planning District Commission, but this is water funds. This is an increase in, in budget in order to receive water grant funds that come from the PDC. Also, in addition to those budget changes, there is a motion to award <coughs> the proposal for free audit services from the Peacock Fern Brown. And these are the, of course, these are the, uh, the balances. They balance the books. And, do the pre-audit work before the actual auditor comes in and audits them. And this is a, a contract, obviously, that's necessary to, to meet the audit requirements. Now, that's, uh, that's just a uh, summary of the actions here. If you have any questions on any of those actions, we'll try to answer those questions. If not, then you can vote to approve them wholesale for that meeting. Are there any questions or discussion? Yes. Uh, there was some question on the Commonwealth Attorney's Office. Yes. You'll find that on page 20. She just clarified. Okay. She wanted to transfer $250 from travel to fees. Okay. Yes. So that's under this is there on page 16. Okay, that was the, that was the question, wasn't it, Lisa, in the meeting? Any further questions or discussion? If not, the clerk will do a roll call vote. Yes. Okay. All this money's transfer from their budget, right? Mm -hmm. I guess it, yeah, that's right. I think for this time of year, that's not unusual sometimes when they see they're going to have some money from one item that they need to transfer to another. It's kind of procedural for this time of year. But if you have any questions, we'd be glad to address them. No, that'd be my only question. Mm -hmm. I'm just wondering. I'm sure they're not wanting to turn anything back in. Yeah. Yet. So, you know, yeah. it's kind of a two sided horse. Yeah. Thank you, ma'am. Uh -huh. Are we ready for a roll call vote? Okay, this, this roll call vote will be to. Approve the recommendation made by the budget committee on the meeting that was held on May 7th. Roscoe Call. I believe I would abstain. I don't about I would abstain. Bill Stevenson. I think I'm going to follow his suit. I just got this, and you know, not really a lot of explanation to it. I get budget transfers. Uh, I don't have nothing. So abstain? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Wayne Blevins? Yes. Chris Ratliff? Yes. Charlie Atkins? Yes. 
Corey Neal? Yes. Judy Yes. So the motion passes with five yeas and two abstentions. Madam Chairman, in reading what's in the minutes there, I believe just to clarify, we probably need to take that bottom of page 16. I think it would be better safe to make a motion to approve uh, the Commonwealth Attorney's Office transfer of $500 because it came out of committee recommended that we look at it further. Mm -hmm. So I think I'm going to make a motion that we approve that also. Is there a second to the motion? Second. The clerk will do a roll call vote. Yes. 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 And I think the next item is the committee report from buildings and grounds. Yes, ma'am. If you will turn in your original bound packet, page 23. The Building and Grounds Committee has been trying to address the issue with early voting and the, uh, the possible increase in traffic that the registrar's office will see. And in doing so, we've looked at different places that we might be able to move the registrar's office to. You'll notice here in the first meeting on this page on 23, that was held on March 10th, that the motion was made to instruct myself to contact the current owner of the old Drew Country Building, Mr. Ralph Price, and to uh, inquire the cost and who is already there, uh, what real income there may be, so on and so forth. Uh, this was done, and that information was brought back to the next building in Ralph meeting, which will find minutes on page 24, until April the 14th, at which time uh, the motion was made to direct an RFP to be put out. This RFP was put out and it will be concluded on May 22nd, which means um, at our next board meeting I'll be able to present the results of that to this board. Um, at this time, I do not see that there's any motion that needs to be made to take action. We're just in limbo on the RFP. I'll present the information to you next year. Okay. I think that we need to go back actually and approve minutes from previous meetings. Um, you have before you the minutes for March the 10th, 2020, April the 15th, 2020, and April the 21st, 2020. Uh, do we have any discussion or changes to those? There was only one small thing that I noticed that for the record uh, on page 19. Um, Chris Ratliff is recorded as Royal Oak District Supervisor. And you might want to change that accordingly. So if there are no changes, uh, do I have a motion to approve? With the correction, okay. Thanks. So we have a motion from Chris to approve with the noted correction. Is there a second? A second. Second. The clerk will note a roll call vote. Ross Yes. Bill Stevenson. I'm staying due to absence. Wade Blevins. Yes. Chris Rattler. Yes. Yeah. Charlie Atkins? Yes. Corey Neal? Yes. Judy Yes. The motion passes with six ayes and one abstention. 
Next on the agenda are uh, appointments. We have two appointments that we need to make for um, substitutes for the Board of Equalization. The two names that we have to present are Lou Don and Doug Arm Armstrong. Do we have a, a motion to approve? So moved. Is there a second? I'll second that. And clerk will do a roll call vote. Russell Yes. Bill Stevenson? Yes. Wade Blevins? Yes. Chris Travis? Yes. Charlie Atkins? Yes. Corey Deal? Yes. Judy White? Yes. The motion carries unanimously. We also need to set the rate of pay. Uh, historically, the rate of pay has been $100 per day and $50 for anything less than three hours. So we need, um, is there any discussion on that? I'm, I'm sorry, Madam Chairman. Another feedback please. Yes. Uh, historically, Chris, the pay has been $100 per day um, and $50 if they only meet for three hours or less. Thank, thank you for that clarification. Mm -hmm. I move we continue to approve, uh, approve it and as we have done in the past. We have a motion to approve. Is there a second? Chris Rand here. Second. And the clerk will now do a roll call vote. Russell Jacob? Yes. Bill Stevenson? Yes. Clayton Blevins? Yes. Yes. Charlie Atkins? Yes. Lori Deal? Yes. Judy White? Yes. The motion passes unanimously. Uh, the next appointment is by Phil Stevenson. Madam Chairman, I'd like to make a motion to reappoint Patsy Waddle to the Social Services who has served the last term and done an outstanding job. Very involved in the community and is a good fit for that point. Thank you, Mr. Stevenson. We have a motion by Mr. Stevenson, a second by uh, Mr. Blevins, and the clerk will do a roll call vote. Crossbow call? Yes. Bill Stevenson? Yes. Wayne Blevins? Yes. Chris Rattler? Yes. Charlie Atkins? Yes. Lori Deal? Yes. Judy White? Yes. The motion passes unanimously. Um, there's one additional appointment that we need to make, and that's to the New River Mount Rogers Workforce Investment Board. We haven't had a member on there. And I would like to um, appoint Lori Hester Deal to that board. She has agreed to serve. So we have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. The clerk will now do a roll call vote. Yes. Bill Stevenson? Yes. Yes. The motion passes unanimously. Are there any others? I'd like to make an um, appointment to the um, I said, yeah, appointment to the library board. We're down to four members again. I'd like to nominate uh, Pat and Graham for that board. Do we have a, a motion? Yeah, Pat. Okay. Do we have a second? Second. The clerk will now do a roll call vote. Russell Collins? Yes. Bill Stevenson? No. Wayne Blevins? No. <coughs> Chris Rattler? 
Yes. 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 The motion passes with five yes and two no's. Lori, I think that's yours. Yes, thank you, Madam Chair. And um, I, too, is where I'm now just going to have a seat with the um, Social Services Board. I would like to nominate the Board of the District to 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 the Board of the District. And what is her background, Lori? Director of Operations at Boarding Hope Boarding Ministries. Okay. Okay. Her organization works with children in Honduras and other countries in the world. Okay, that sounds like a good a good fit. So there's a motion. I'll second it. And the clerk will do a roll. Good. The clerk will do a roll call vote. Madam Chairman. Yes. Before a roll call, could you recap the name of the person? Her name is Angie Blevins. Is that correct, Lori? Yes, ma'am. Angie Blevins, Chris. Thank you for that clarification. Mm -hmm. And we're ready for roll call vote. Roster call. Yes. Bill Stevenson? Yes. Buddy Blevins? Yes. Chris Stratton? Yes. Charlie Atkins? Yes. Lori Hill? Yes. Judy White? Yes. The motion passes unanimously. Madam Chairman, this is Scott Farley. Yes. Was there similar appointment? Yes. To the Board of Equalization as an alternate? We had two, Scott. Okay, what were their names? One is Lou Don, that's L O U, the first name. Don, D O N, just as it sounds. And the second one um, is Greg Greg Armstrong. Mm -hmm. All right, next on the agenda we have to schedule a public hearing for the Conorock Green Cove Laurel Valley Festival Permit, which is scheduled for June the 9th, 2020 at 6 p.m. Um, this is in your packet for review. Do we have any questions? I'm sorry, Lori, what did you say? Yes, yes, please. If there are no questions. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Okay, which? We have a, all right. We have a motion by Lori. We have a second by Wade. And the clerk will now do a roll call vote. Roster call. Yes. Bill Stevenson. Yes. Wayne <coughs> Levins. Yes. Chris Rattler. Yes. Charlie Atkins. Yes. Lori Neal. Yes. Uy. Yes. The motion passes unanimously. Next on the agenda is to schedule a public hearing for the Rich Valley Fair Festival Permit, scheduled for June the 9th, 2020, at 6.15 p.m. You have this before you in your packet. Uh, are there any questions or discussions? Move to 
to approve the minutes. We have a motion by Phil Stevenson. We have a second by Chris Ratliff. And the clerk will now do a roll call vote. Actually, that was Roscoe. Oh, Roscoe, I'm sorry. So we had the motion by Phil, a second by Roscoe, and now we'll have a roll call vote by the clerk. Roscoe, call? Yeah. Roscoe, call? Yeah. Phil Stevenson? Yes. Chris Ratliff? Yes. Chris Ratliff? Yes. Charlie Atkins? Yes. Lori Deal? Yes. Judy Byers? Yes. The motion passes unanimously. Next on the agenda is a report from our county attorney, Scott Farthing. Thank you. This is Scott Farthing. Uh, Scott, you have the floor. Okay, thank you, Scott. Do we have any other questions for Scott? All right, thank you very much, Scott. Next, next on the agenda is the Coronavirus Relief Fund payments, and that's Aaron Sizemore. Find a certification for receipt for these relief funds. Now, this is fairly new information, but as the money came from the federal government and through the state, they've now devised a plan to get this money out to localities. Um, our portion of these funds to be received is a little over $2.6 million. It, um, I wish I could go into greater detail as to how we can spend these funds, but having just received this information today, I, I, I'm afraid that I will tell you wrong. However, if we do not pass this tonight to be able to receive these funds, then we will likely miss the deadline or have to have a special call meeting. So with that being said, the way the program works is they send us the money uh, once we sign these, once we uh, approve this certification of receipt, this guarantees that we'll meet all the federal requirements. We'll only spend the money as we're supposed to spend the money. Once the money hits our general fund, then we will um, we will devise a way to, to, to use it to the best ability, or you will devise a way to use it to the best ability to the best use. And um, at that time, we'll make sure that, that you all have all the information necessary to make sure that you comply with federal regulations that are attached to these monies and are not spent by December 30th, 2020, then they will take them back. But in order to receive this up front so that we can go through this whole process, um, I would ask that someone would make a motion to approve the certification for receipt. I'll make a good motion. Charlie, we have a motion by Charlie, a second by Chris, and we have a roll call vote by the clerk. Roscoe Call? Yes. Chris Ratliff? Yes. Judy Byers? Yes. Chris Ratliff? Yes. Lori Deal? Yes. Charlie Atkins? Yes. Chris Ratliff? Yes. So the motion passes unanimously. I have a quick question there. Mm -hmm. Do we know if the towns, the three towns are getting any money or not? They receive their money through us. It is their responsibility to proportionally distribute. Okay, good. By population. Okay. I think before we move down to old business, we'll go back and do the approval of the payment of invoices. Board members, you have before you for consideration of appropriations and accounts payable listed on the regular agenda and packet and also in the uh, additional agenda. If, are there any questions or comments? 
Madam Chairman, I never received, as of 3 o'clock this afternoon, I had not seen the uh, listing of the accounts payable. So I'm going to abstain from voting on that. Anybody else? The clerk will. You have a motion, Lori, to approve? Yes. Is there a second? Chris Rattle, right here. Motion by Lori, a second by Chris, and the clerk will do a roll call vote. Roger, call. Yes. Bill Stevenson? Yes. Wade Levins? Yes. Chris Rattle? Yes. Charlie Atkins? I abstain. Lori Hill? Yes. Judy White? Yes. The motion passes with six ayes and one abstention. We'll now move to old business, uh, the audit discussion by Aaron Sizemore. This item is in reference to the RF team that I was instructed to put out for a All the services, and um, in our in our discussions with the audit with the audit firms, um, the, the forensic audit that's the word I've been writing. I'm sorry, the uh, forensic audit request uh, went out, and um, we had several audit firms contact me directly by phone, and they asked um, who, who particularly we were. Pursuing and who we were taking to court, I said I said no when we were you know just trying to do this information on them, and they said that when you uh, put out for a forensic audit that you are assuming and that the audit firm that responds is assuming that this is a case that's going to court. Um, with that being said, I had I had only two responses. Neither of those responses, one did not have pricing. One was a was a resume sheet, and the other had pricing for an alternative that was not what we put out an RFP for. That basically said, um, "We'll look into someone and and find out if they're guilty for twenty five thousand. We'll go to court and testify that they are guilty for another twenty five thousand." But I did not feel like it was it was accurate in what we asked for. Um, I wish that I could provide you better direction, but at this point in time, I feel like that that, that forensic audit that we asked for missed the mark and where our intentions were. If I had misunderstood that and misunderstood that, please please clarify and direct me. But um, no firm with the information that we had was willing to, to perform that forensic audit. So uh, I apologize, but I'm I'm stuck here with this process. Do we have some discussion on this? Madam Chairman, it's Rod. Yes. I, without having a picture in mind, I don't see why it's necessary to That's a lot of money for nothing. Okay. Mr. Ratliff, I think that originally you had um, had some input on that. Do you have any thoughts on it? Well, I guess I did just show a little bit. However, I think the point that the audit firms were not going to provoke something to the I still feel that it's incumbent upon, upon us to make sure everything is where it should be. I'm not sure. I'm not sure what to say, being not sure. I think that. Originally, from what if I'm understanding you correctly from the previous meetings, is it was just to have a good base point to move from uh, 
with the changes on the board and, and all that. And I think we've had some previous discussion on it. And if I remember correctly, I think we have said that maybe we would like to discuss with the auditors examining certain areas in more detail rather than calling it a forensic audit. Is that correct, board? Maybe looking at some of the internal control uh, accounts payable. I'm not trying to get some terminology just just to have a clear understanding that all of the books of our assets and liabilities that we take for a period of time. Personally, in reviewing the audit, I felt like it was a little vague and weak in some of the areas that may uh, may give us a little bit more assurance, just in general, like with any audit, as far as looking at some things more closely. Um, I don't know how the other members feel, Mr. Blevins, Mr. Stevenson, short of a forensic audit. It's just... You know, it's like just double checking for the protection of the board and also for the employees. I just don't feel like, you know, saying from paying two hours, we're done to paying one. Yeah. If they ain't, well, if we just them. ask the auditors responsible, if they would just, and it shouldn't be an additional cost, it should just be part of their audit. I know. For what we're paying, we're already doing that. Well, in reviewing it, I felt it was a little weak. How did you feel, Charlie? Yeah, I did too, but I, I think probably at this point we're, we're early May, year ends in two months. I just say we just finish this year out with the auditors, let them get their report done, and we have to actually look and review the audit as a board and not just go through the motions of having them seen to us and put it in the drawer. Let's go through it and analyze it, uh, as opposed to what we, what's been done in the past few years. Spending twenty-five thousand dollars. No, no. but just I think it's overkill. I think we're good, and I think we need to move on. I think we've got a lot of other tasks. So we just we don't want to go the direction of forensic audit, but we just want a clear understanding. I think. No, be right. You know, I'll go along with Mr. Atkins this time. We're here at the end. Why? Why? Let's just finish. Yeah. Go on. You know, there's no use of. I, I just don't. I don't agree with. It. Okay. All right. So, I. Madam Chairman. Yes. This is Scott yes. Your annual audit, with your firm at that, will be able to take questions that you all may have and make a presentation. To you all in a different way, if you if you can instruct them what you want. I agree, Scott. I think we just need to have a little bit clearer communication. For the years I've been on the board, it's kind of a rushed December meeting. They come in in a hurry and they hand it to us, and there hasn't been any time to really review and sit down and go through it. And I think that would be something that would serve us well. Uh, even in our fiduciary responsibilities is to just sit down and be able to go through some of the things and then come back and have a, an open discussion about it. And that shouldn't involve any additional cost. I think it's just being more informed and giving more guidance to what we feel like we need. Um, but is that, that, that's just my feeling on it. So do we just want to table this then. Is everybody in agreement on that? Okay. All right. The next thing is the county attorney advertisement, and that's Aaron. In conclusion to the RFP that we put out for full-time county attorney, we did not have any responses. So um, we're at the point now we we have two attorneys on the table. Um, I'm obviously, obviously um, new. 
but um, I do feel like that our legal issues are being taken care of and that initially for the first two months we were, we were pretty heavy we were trying to catch up because we went time without an attorney. I feel like that, that that period is over and that we're okay now, but um, you know, that's, that's just my opinion, but I feel like our legal issues are being handled. Do we have any discussion from the board members or input? Is there a motion? Yes. Uh, I know I share you just want to really Mr. Graham. Um, I enjoy the work. And I know you're trying to hire a new kind of new student. Um, and something I don't really want to do, but I will bid against myself and offer to do these services for a little bit cheaper at $200 an hour uh, in an effort to hopefully keep my job a little longer until the county administrator gets settled in. And then you also make a determination in the future if you want to seek full time legal counsel and re advertise at some future. Okay, Scott, thank you. Uh, do we have any comments from the board? Yes, ma'am. Okay. I appreciate him doing that. I do too. Personally, I think he's a little high. So mm -hmm. I feel I've got a little better gut in my stomach about it. I feel yeah. like we're paying out the wazoo for a turn. Yeah, and, and we do appreciate you, Scott. We know you came in at a difficult time, and it took a little bit of time to get up to speed on everything that was transitioning in. So we do appreciate all of your work and all of your efforts, and we feel like you've served us well, and we do appreciate you reducing the rate, especially during the tight budgetary times. Thank you so much. But, yeah. well, um, I'm happy to do it. I just want to remind you that Legal fees go up and down based on demand and the need of the board. So those bills will go up and down. Right. Well, I know we had a backlog of some things that we needed to get processed, and I feel like we've pretty well gone through that. Is, am I correct in assuming that, Scott? To my knowledge, yes. Yeah. We have the tax assessment case. That will be time intensive because of litigation. Mm -hmm. But other than that, you should have normal routine legal services going on. Well, I, I, I commend you and, and all the staff for the job you've done and for getting us to this point. Uh, do we have any other discussion? So, do we need a motion? I would like to echo that. I appreciate it. They don't check this yeah. So right now we've had a month to month contract, is that correct, Aaron? No, it's it's a retainer contract. A retainer. Um, yes, in other words, um, myself or, or you can engage him and ask for certain tasks and, and you feel by the hour. Okay. So are we comfortable with continuing that as Scott Suggested he would work with us until we got a new county administrator and then reevaluate it. Are we going at the two hundred dollar rate? Uh huh. I'll make a motion to approve it. Thank you, Phil. So we have a motion from Phil to approve. Do I have a second? Second. The clerk will do a roll call vote. Roll call. I'll vote for it. Well, for a, a turn. Oh, right. Yeah, I'd like to amend mine to, to that. To that right? Okay. That's a good idea, Roscoe. Sorry, Madam Chairman. Okay. Yes, Stevenson? Yes. Can you repeat the motion? It was amended. It was amended at the rate of $200 per hour.
So we have a motion, we have a second, and now we have the roll call vote. Roscoe Call. Yes. Bill Stevenson? Yes. Wayne Blevins? No. Chris Rattler? Yes. Charlie Atkins? Yes. Lori Deal? Yes. Judy White? Yes, so the motion passes with six ayes and one no. That completes everything I have on the agenda, Aaron, unless you're aware of something else. Okay. So we're ready for supervisor comment time. Um, I think we might start with the ones who are joining us electronically. Chris, would you like to go first? Um, I'll try to keep it short. There's a echo. Just encourage the people to be safe. You come and see us. Support your local businesses. Thank you. Roscoe? Yes, everybody be safe. And I hope to see you face the next week. Sounds good. Sounds good. Lori? Lori, I think you have something special. It's going to take me a minute to read. Yes, but this is, this is a, a very important thing that I think that the board um, is going to be proud to support. And Lori, thank you for compiling it. And if you would read it, please. Certainly. I wanted to take the time to recognize our graduates, our Marion High School, Ohio High School, and Northwood High School. These are certainly unprecedented times for them. And I wanted to I wanted to welcome my fellow board members after the revolution uh, to recognize them. So those of you who are and County, um, you should have a copy of this early in the packet, but I'll read it for the people that are going on. It says, whereas this 19 pandemic has wreaked havoc across the world and has created unprecedented historical times as millions of people have been infected with the horrible virus, and whereas the COVID-19 pandemic has created times of uncertainty and new challenges for the education, forcing teachers to develop new students, and forcing students to adapt to the world of learning. And whereas the COVID-19 pandemic has introduced a new normal filled with numerous challenges. It did not stop the senior class of 22 from accomplishing their goal of graduating. Whereas the senior class of 2020 is now part of history and they have adapted to changes, persisted in completing assignments, and managed to obtain deployments during this unprecedented time. And whereas, by resolution, the Smith County Board of Supervisors would like to recognize and commission the class of 2020 from Chilton High School, Marion Senior High School, and Northport High School. Now, therefore, be it resolved, the Smith County Board of Supervisors Hereby congratulates all of those Cleveland seniors in Smith County and wishes them well on all and ever. I think that's excellent. I'm glad that we as a board uh, can do that. And I, I think certainly all of us wish this class the very best in the future. And uh, so much we've heard of the things that they have missed, like 
their proms and to be able to even have their last day of school and so many things they haven't got to do. But the one thing I want to really mention that I feel strongly is they are a historical class. This class will always be remembered because of the special situations that they have gone through this year. And I've talked briefly with Lori, and I'd like for us to think further, but I'd like to be able to do something special for these children um, to commend them and to acknowledge them. We haven't come up with anything yet, so if you all have any ideas of how we might be able to to honor them further, uh, we would welcome this suggestion. So thank you, Lori. Certainly. So I'll make that motion after a motion. Thank you. Yes, Lori. Thank you. Um, I have a second. Second. So we have a motion by Lori, a second by Charlie, and the clerk will do a roll call vote. Yes. Bill Stevenson? Yes. Wade Blevins? Yes. Chris Ratliff? Yes. Charlie Atkins? Yes. Lori Gill? Yes. Judy White? Yes. So if the motion passes unanimously, congratulations to the class of 2020. You have our best wishes. Um, Wade? Just everybody stay safe. Bill? No comment. Um, I would just like to mention that we will have, the board will have a special call meeting from Monday, May the 18th at 5 p.m. for consideration of a candidate for the position of county administrator. So uh, please take note of that. Otherwise, I'd like to thank everybody for all their efforts, for their patience during this pandemic, and to reassure everybody that the county is doing everything that we can to work together to make sure that we keep our county as safe as possible during this time and to support our local businesses. Uh, please, you know, please be aware of, of patronizing them and doing everything we can to, to uh, help the economy here in Smith County. So again, thank you for your, your patience and for all your input and all your hard work. Charlie? Uh, just one comment, uh, looking at the water report we had in front of us here, so we're getting back to some of the business. Uh, looks like we're making headway on getting our water losses down. I love the fact that uh, if we can operate all of them like, uh, I think it's Midway, I looked at there, where we're selling more water than we're making. Mm -hmm. If we could just do that everywhere, it would be nice. So I don't know what's going on there, but I guess there's some reason. But uh, I'll get later. <laughs> Uh, we need to check into that, but uh, it looks like some of it's going down. Sorry, Ms. Well, that is an important thing. It is. It's the only way you can sell more than you can buy is off the meter. Yeah. I know we've had some issues in our district, so. All right. Well, then we need a motion to adjourn. So, Madam Chair, if you don't want oh, to, we, we will need to continue meeting discussing Okay. Together to take care of um, the fourth Thursday will be the 28th. The third Thursday will be the 21st. Generally, we generally schedule, you schedule a Thursday that's, that's later on in the month. But those are your two dates. One thing we'll need to consider then is the school board budget. Yes. They're, they have tentatively scheduled May 20th for a call school me to consider approving the first school budget. So we need after that to schedule a public hearing for that. Okay. So I know the, next, the day after that then would be the 21st, right? Right. So the 28th, which date will you be out, Lori? The 21st. Let's go with the 28th then. Is that acceptable for all of you? I think it's what our Bible says. Yeah. Second Tuesday and the fourth Thursday. So is that agreeable? All right, so we'll, we'll continue the meeting to May the 28th at 5 p.m. All right, thank you so much. Thank you.